Welcome to the review of Unit 4. Earlier we talked about the situation that's ongoing in Ethiopia. Um, and it's about uh, focusing on a small percentage of the ethnic group in the country, the Tigrians, uh, in the region of Tigray. That's in the northern part of Ethiopia. Now, to give you just a little more information we discussed is in 2018, uh, the current Prime Minister, Abiy Ahmed, uh, when he took power, he negotiated a peace treaty with Eritrea and, of course, a war that had been ongoing, some regional conflict was finally resolved. There was peace. Uh, but the Tigrians were not happy about this because they thought it was betrayal against them and their sacrifice for having large influence in the military from 1991 to 2018. Betrayal. Betrayal. So they actually, because of this betrayal, they started looting the central government military bases and taking the rockets and equipment and all these weapons. Well, the central government reacted by cutting off funding for a election that was supposed to happen regionally in that area, but it was canceled due to COVID-19. So this escalated the situation and they started attacking the government forces, causing a kind of civil war situation. Um, and also these Tigrayan militias started launching rockets into Eritrea, causing their military to attack them. Loot. Loot. Escalate. Escalate. Do you think it's better to have a more powerful central government or maybe regional powers? I find that to be a very difficult question because I feel in some cases central government can be dangerous because mm -hmm. they have all the power. Right. Um, and then in that case when things escalate, it's good to have regional power too because mm -hmm. they can kind of break away from that. Right. But then that also causes chaos yes. because if every region wants to be more powerful, right. that can cause more trouble. So I cannot give a, a straight <laughs> answer there. It's such a hard question. Right. What do you think? Well, uh, as an American, there's like two sides of this perspective. Right. <laughs> and that is the ongoing conflict in yeah. uh, the debate. You know, the founding fathers of America mm. kind of wanted a compromise between these two. Mm. You know, they took it from what happened in the UK. They didn't want a strong monarchy. They right. didn't want a central power. But they also took influence from the, the Greeks, focusing mm. on a little more of the republics, mm. the federations. And so that's kind of how America's structure mm. is. The Senate. Are there any groups that are maybe influential in your country, in your region? Um, I think if I do look at all the cultural groups in South Africa, I'd th say the two dominant groups would be the Zulu people and the Kosa people, because okay. Mandela used to be a, a Kosa. So him being a Kosa gives them more influence, you know. Mm, and okay. um, the Zulu people just have a very rich, strong history in South Africa, and a few presidents have been Zulu too, one, mm. one recent one. Influential. Influential. What about America? Well, uh, we're a big mixing pot of ethnicities right, and right. cultures, uh, so it's hard to say. However, I can say that it's majority Caucasian, yeah. uh, of European descent. So right. that seems to be the major group, although we strive and we push for you know representation of all groups mm. in our government and in every level of that. Mm. So it's not perfect, but they're trying. You're right, right. So I haven't ever thought about an ethnic group being in control of America, but yes. obviously Caucasians are the major right. one. That's basically it. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> all right, well, that's it for the review section, and we'll see you on the next one.